Right. It's a, a noble profession, and I've been a teacher for over 30 years. So I um, love kids. And being with kids uh, is, is a great job to do. Um, so that's who I am. I am an ex-kid and, and I like having fun. The peace and quiet of his office is a sanctuary for Bruce McLaughlin. His dog Chelsea can and does hide here, but as principal, he can't ignore what's going on outside. Here, on the outskirts of Auckland, students as young as five do whatever they want in the playground. They roam around with no shoes, but plenty of homemade weapons. They climb as high as they can, and often higher. Not in secret, but blatantly proudly. These kids don't care who sees. And there's basically no rules. Yeah, there's no rules, basically. Before school, the kids make the rules. Wait, please! Yeah. But in the two 40-minute play sessions after forced food breaks, anything goes. <laughs> I'd be scared. You'd be scared because you might be too heavy. Oh, thanks. No rules, no limits, no problem for the principal. What do you call this, Bruce? Chaos? Yeah. Organised chaos. Doesn't look very organised no. to me. <laughs> this looks a mess, Rosie. To me, it looked dangerous. And don't you worry when they're climbing up high and... I always say to people when they're looking and they say, oh, a kid might get hurt, I say, don't look. That is very, very high. If it worries you, don't look. When do you step in? How far is too far? Personally, I, I wouldn't step in at all. I would wait for a kid to come to me for help. So when kids are on their own, learning to do things for themselves, some of the lessons might be hard, but they're good lessons. It's good learning. When Bruce strolls through the playground, the kids know he's there. Can't miss those shoes. They also know there's only one thing they could do to make him really mad. Do you have any rules? I suppose that there are rules that people understand, are rules in society, you know? Kids aren't allowed to kill each other. So that's the only rule? A yeah. kid can't kill another kid? Yeah. It's been three years since Bruce introduced free-range kids play breaks. The idea was to stop saying no. We didn't say, you can't do that, we just turned a blind eye. Over a period of time, we turned a blind eye to everything, because actually, uh, nothing that the kids were doing was a problem. The real problem, he says, is molly coddling. The birth of helicopter parenting, the need to wrap our kids up in cotton wool and not give them an opportunity to hurt themselves, um, and when you do that, for the very best of reasons, you're actually taking away a lot of learning opportunities for kids. So Bruce decided to throw out the rule book without asking the parents. Because we didn't actually tell them what we were doing. Um, and what we were doing was basically just taking away the rules gradually and uh, letting kids be kids. Needless to say, the kids think he's great, but then they would. I'll, I'll do one more and I'll go back to class. It's a bow and arrow with sticks and string. What it's made of it. Ah, uh, you shoot it. Okay. I'm still really careful not to hit anyone. Though. What do you do when you can only when you can do anything you like? What do you do? We like have fun, climb trees. <laughs>
Bruce pushed it even way past where I was willing to go. Professor Grant Schofield and his research into playtime behaviour are partly to blame. What began as a study of childhood obesity became an investigation into how kids play. So we went to a bunch of schools and st started to think, well, could we reintroduce the idea of a risky, unmanaged play? Kids playing on their own terms. Hello. And the answer to start with from schools, at least in the, the higher socioeconomic areas, was no. Bruce said yes. Professor Schofield believes it will pay off because risk is good for young brains. So the bit of the brain that manages risk and controls emotion develops when you expose it to exactly that risk and emotion. And this frontal lobe, prefrontal cortex in particular, is something that develops through childhood into early adulthood. And it's a very important part of the brain. It, it runs simulations about the consequences of our behaviour. If I behave like this, then this will happen. If I do this, then maybe this will happen. He says overprotection can do more harm than good. They, they need this physical stimulus and they're going to need it at some point in their life. You can do it when they're eight up a tree, you do it when they're 21 in a bar. It's, it, and that's a choice we're making as a society and we're, we're making that choice consciously. Still, it's easier to research free-range play than it is to embrace it and to enforce it. Bruce is walking much closer to the line than I am because he's a hairbreadth away from some kind of hurting themselves and him being the villain. No, the number one rule in snorkeling. Remember, don't put your head down too far. You're going to fill your snorkel with water and breathe in water. Roy and Lida Waite have three boys, all students of Swanson School. Curtis broke his arm when he fell off his scooter during free play. Roy took him straight to the emergency room, then went to see Bruce. And he came in through the door and it looked as if he had a face like thunder. And uh, I showed him to the seat and we all sat down. And he started off by saying, um, my son broke his arm in the playground last week. And I was all set to launch into an apology when he said... I'm happy that he's fallen off and broken his arm, as bad as that sounds as a parent. I was happy that he'd fallen off and, and learnt his lesson and, you know, hurt himself at school and so on. I just sort of went, wow, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Curtis told me he was really relieved. He didn't want to be the reason the experiment failed. I used to hate going to school. Now I just love it. These days on the scooter, he's a little bit more careful. Bruce says fewer kids hurt themselves now than before the No Rules program was introduced. That's despite the ticking time bombs that litter this playground. The place is an absolute mess. It's full of junk and they don't even know where lots of it came from. I think just kids are bringing it in from their own houses. There's huge big chunks of timber, jagged edges everywhere, big bits of steel. To adults, it's rubbish, but to kids, it's awesome. The possibilities are endless, and so are the risks. Do you enforce tetanus shots? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I saw them hurt themselves. I climbed. I'm up here. I'm up. Whoa. I saw them help each other. Be careful. Considerate. Cooperative. We need to look back up this way. No one was using iPods, smartphones, or game consoles. They're not banned, but the kids seem too busy for technology. The bigger kids who broke up fights seem to show up just in time. And as soon as the bell rang, they went inside, where the chaos was gone. They're focused on learning here because they have had a chance to burn off all that energy. They've done what they wanted to do, and now they come back in here and they focus on learning. This calm is proof, Bruce reckons, He's doing the right thing. And, that, and those are your choices. Concentration, he claims, is up. Incidents of bullying, way down. 
Confidence, sky high, and injuries, far fewer. The teachers took a while to get on board. And I kind of went, my kids are going to get knocked over, Bruce. This is crazy, this is crazy. Just crazy enough to work. In New Zealand, we do things perhaps a little bit differently. Um, I, I think we like to ask for forgiveness rather than permission. Um, so we just do it. It's much easier for schools in New Zealand to test radical ideas. There's a national insurance scheme covering the medical costs of personal injuries, so parents don't tend to sue schools. You know, even if worst case scenarios, you know, happens, then I certainly wouldn't want to take legal action. I, I think it's, it's bloody great. Not because of what the teachers do, but what they don't do. This little girl got stuck and asked for help. Now I forgot how to get down. When I asked Bruce if I could give her a hand, he told me no. So you get up, you get down. She did. Then she climbed straight back up. 